Alright, our first example is uh, a plane wall in series. It deals with two mediums with different lengths and thermal conductivities, A and B. And also you have hot fluid on the left and a cooler fluid on the right. So we're gonna, the uh, two mediums are going to be experiencing convection effects from the uh, ambient air on each side and, as well as conduction effects through the, uh, through the system and it's going to be going from left to right from hot to cool. So how we calculate our heat rate is we know that our heat rate is equal to the temperature distribution over our total resistance. So we need to find all of our resistances. Our, uh, our first one is from the fluid to the surface temperature uh, T1 and that resistance is equal to 1 over the convection coefficient times the area. And so now we're going from temperature 1 to temperature 2. That's conduction, so that'll be the length of A over the thermal conductivity of A times the area. And the same thing from 2 to 3 except for B. And then we also we experience convection again from B to from temperature T3 to uh, the ambient air, and that is equal to 1 over the convection coefficient times the area. So we need to add up all these resistances. We can make this resistance 1, 2, 3, 4, and just basically add up all those. Uh, I guess I'll write the equation down here. So our total heat rate from fluid temperature 1 to fluid temperature 2, add up all these resistances, and there's the final answer. For this next example, going over one dimensional steady state conduction. This plane ball is going to be in parallel. And how we do this, with our material right here, which is four different materials, but it's got an insulator on top, insulator on bottom. As you can see, there is no <clears throat> ambient temperature on either side, so convection is not going to be involved. But what we are starting with is T1 is going to be the hotter, temp the higher temperature, and it's going to be going towards the lower temperature at T2. As you can see, Q which is the heat rate, is going towards T2. As in the first example, Q equals delta T over the resistance total. All right, I want to point out that the second and third mediums right here, they have the same area, the same thickness, same area. And then going on to the fourth medium. Now coming down here to the thermal circuit, I want to point out heat is traveling towards T2. From T1 to T2, you get your first conductive resistance, and then you come over to your next, your medium 2 and 3, which is in parallel. And how you would write it in parallel is the same as you would do with an electrical circuit. You would go 1 over resistance 1 plus 1 over resistance 2. And out there would give you your R total. Continue to the third medium, you have your conductive resistance of area D. Continuing to temperature 2. To write this out, equation Q, we've got the change in temperature over R1 plus the parallel circuit, which is 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 which makes that in series with R1 and R4. You can uh, approach the problem differently by drawing out a different thermal circuit. Basically, you just take this uh, resistance at A and you expand it into parallel and you have the area and you do the same thing on the side D. And then what you can do is make this act as uh, two, uh, two uh, resistances in series, but they're in parallel, so you add up all of these resistances to equal R1, and then all down here to equal R2, and coming over here, we know that when resistances are in parallel, it's equal to this equation, so we take our total resistance, and then 
This is how we get our heat rate. For this example, we're going to cover yeah. cylindrical walls. And for a situation that would involve cylindrical walls would be simply a water flowing through a pipe where you, uh, you have your inside fluid that is just hotter than your ambient fluid that's on the outside part of the pipe. For this, it's just going to be, we're going to do it in cylindrical coordinates so we can simply write a series circuit rather than having to perform complex points of geometry. So, your fir first, con first resistance is going to be due to convection with, uh, from the fluid to your c contact in the, uh, the inside part of the pipe, where T1 or T1 is at, and it is going to be equal to one over your convection uh, heat transfer coefficient times the circumference of the inside of the pipe, which is simply two pi of two pi r1 times the length of the entire pipe, which could extend beyond there. Your uh, ne next resistor is due to conduction, which is simply the natural log of your outside radius of the, of the outside part of circumference of your pipe, which is R2, divided by R1, all over uh, 2 pi times the length of the pipe, and, as well as the conductivity of the material that the pipe is actually made of. The, our third resistor is due to convection with the ambient, which, like the inside part, is due to the convection coefficient of the ambient times 2 pi R, two of the outside part of your pipe since it's convection with the ambient times the entire length of the pipe. And to simply solve for the heat rate, it's just going to be the temperature difference between the two ambients times the total resistance across the entire thermal circuit. So, simply it would be T infinity 2 minus T infinity 1 all over the total resistance, which naming this will be R1, R2, and R3. And this is a series circuit they just simply add. And that's how you solve for your heat rate. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about uh, cylindrical coordinates with uh, heat rates, except this time we're going to do through uh, three materials, which is going to be like a composite wall on our uh, cylindrical system. Uh, inside our cylinder, we're going to have a uh, fluid H with thermal co uh, convection coefficient H1, and it's going to be at T infinity 1. This is going to be the temperature at the inside. Uh, we're going to have three different materials uh, throughout the cylindrical system, and on the outside, we're going to have a, a second fluid with a different convection coefficient with a, a, a lower temperature than T infinity 1. Uh, to break this down into a, a thermal uh, resistor network. We're going to have five different resistors, R1, R2, R3, and R4, and R5. Huh? R1 and R5 are going to be uh, convection resistors from the inside and the outside. R2, R3, and R4 are going to be conduction through our material A, B, and C. Uh, for our first resistor with the convection, we're going to have 1 over H times uh, our area, which is going to be our circumference times the length of the entire pipe. Uh, for the conduction through each three materials are all going to be different because it's with respect to each radius, which is the natural log of the outer radius over the inner radius, which is all going to be over 2 pi L uh, and our uh, conduction coefficient of each material. For R3, it's going to be the natural log of our radius 3 over our radius 2 over 2 pi L for our times our conductive coefficient for uh, material B. And for R4, it's going to be the natural log of our fourth radius over our third radius, all over 2 pi L times our conductive coefficient uh, for material C. And for R5, it's going to be our convection coefficient, 1 over our convection coefficient times 2 pi R4 times L which is the length of the pipe. Uh, for our heat rate equation, we're going to put all of these resistors in series, and on our numerator, we're going to have T infinity 2 minus T infinity 1, which means our outside temperature minus our inside temperature, all over our uh, different resistors, which is going to be R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 plus R5.